Bismillahirrahmanirrahim uh, Today we have a lecture about the universal design uh, In this lecture we are going to discuss the following topics uh, What is a universal design? Uh, seven principles of the universal design What are the principles which are helping us to make a design uh, which can be used by a range of the people because this is the main topic of this uh, lecture universal design people have the different abilities they are coming from the different background so we should design in such a way that uh, they can be used by the range of the people so what are the principles that are being used uh, to make our design as a uh, universal design then we are going to discuss about the multi multi sensory systems human have the five senses and what senses can be used in the design we will discuss uh, in this uh, in this uh, part then we are going to discuss about the in the multi sensory system some of the senses we are using very frequently in the design for example there are the systems which are using the speech recognition then they are the they are the system which are generating the speech and they are the speech synthesis system we will discuss about their uh, properties and what are the drawbacks advantages and disadvantages are there we will discuss about the handwriting recognition system we will discuss about the auditory auditory icons we will discuss about the gestures uh, when we are using the new operating system uh, like a windows 10 uh, or we are using the android uh, we can give the command to the system using the gestures so this is also being discussed and then finally we are going to discuss something about the user with the disabilities the people who have some kind of, some kind of disability for example some people may have a hearing disability some people may have a uh, disability physical disability they may not move or some people cannot see uh, or they are blind or maybe they cannot see uh, very clearly their eyesight is weak so what kind of system can support uh, such peoples so let's first see that what is the universal design uh, people have the different abilities in terms of the physical abilities some people are strong some people are weak so they have a different ability in terms of the technical skills some people are uh, more technical they are highly technical for example they may come from the computer science background or the software engineering so they can use a software system uh, much better than the other people so people have a different abilities and they have a different weakness they come from the different background maybe we can see their different social backgrounds different culture backgrounds so they are coming from the different areas they have a different interest so some people uh, prefer to work with the graphical interface some people find it convenient to use the shortcuts keys so they may have a different interest in different uh, areas they may have a different views uh, viewpoints and the experiences and they are of different ages and the sizes some people uh, old and some people are young some people are children and sizes mean for example some people are tall and some people are uh, short so in the design we have to uh, careful about all of these people so that our design is in a way that it can be used by as many people as possible so this is the main thing in the universal design we want to discuss so let's see some definition for the universal design universal design is the process of designing products so that they can be used as many people as possible so as we have discussed that the people are coming from the different background they have the different abilities so we have to design so that our systems our product can be used as many people as possible in as many situation as possible now we are saying that they can be uh, the system can be used in the different situation for example some systems uh, can be used inside but they may not be convenient to use outside maybe they require the specific temperature or specific lighting so our objective is that the system should be used in many situation for example uh, we should a able to control the illumination or the light or the brightness so that we can use our mobile phone in the indoor environment and we can also adjust it so that it can be used outside the room where the uh, sunlight is more 
so how do we address the issue of human diversity in our design so this is our question what principles what guidelines we should use so that we can uh, achieve the goals of the universal design so we have to discuss the uh, seven principle for the universal design so these principles are equitable use flexibility in the use simple and intuitive to use perceptible information tolerance of error low physical effort size and space for approach and use so we will discuss each of these uh, universal de design principle one by one so first we are discussing the equitable use what is the equitable use the design useful to people with a range of abilities so we should make a design so that it can be the system or the product can be used of the people which have the different ranges and the different abilities and appealing to all where appropriate security privacy and safety provision should be available to all so because the people have the different abilities as I told you that we can talk in terms of the physical abilities we can talk in terms of the mental abilities so some people are more smart they can be uh, they can care about the security but some people may not be so much uh, smart so we have to provide the mechanism the system is automatically monitoring the security some antivirus systems are the stalls there and some firewalls are there similarly we should careful about the privacy of the people information should not be go outside the domain so these things should be uh, considered during the uh, design process so the people with the different abilities either the physical or the mental uh, our design uh, should be in such a way that it is available to all the people the second principle for the universal design is the flexibility in the use the design allows preference through the choice of method of use and adaptivity to the user pace and precision and the custom so in the system there should be some preference there should be some settings which the user can do according to his own requirement as I say that some people are more smarter they can work faster so maybe we can have some shortcut keys are there uh, they can use the shortcut keys to work faster but the people who do not familiar with the shortcut keys there should be some icons should be there and some easy mechanism should be there they can work more slowly maybe their pace is not very fast and similarly for the precision some people uh, can uh, draw with very precision but some people may not draw with a high precision so there should be a mechanism we should provide some units or some kind of measurement they can control the precision or maybe sometime uh, the font size or the font style allows them they can customize the system according to their requirement uh, for example maybe the old people mm, they find it difficult to work with the very small font size so there should be a mechanism in, in the system that they can adjust the font size uh, according to their need uh, the next uh, universal design principle is the simple and intuitive to use uh, there is no explanation because it is already very uh, clear that we should design the system in such a way it should not be very complex it should be simple and the intuitive to use intuitive to use means that when we are looking at the interface we should have idea that how to use the system for example by the radio buttons we should have the idea that we can uh, check the we can check the one of the radio button and they are mutually exclusive and if there are check boxes are there we should have some idea that we can choose the multiple check boxes so these uh, interfaces are giving the idea either they are software interfaces or the hardware inter interfaces by looking at the interface the user, user should have some idea how to use it this is the intuitive to use the next principle for the universal design is the perceptible information what is the perceptible, perceptible information the design should provide the effective communication of the information so that we want that when the user is using the system he should have some idea the information should be given to the user maybe directly or indirectly so that he can grab the information about the system he should know that how the system is working so information should be communicated to the user maybe some help is there maybe some tips are coming when you bringing the mouse over some button or over some icon so you are getting the information what is the purpose for this uh, icon or this button 
in, uh, in the preceptible information the next point is that redundancy of presentation is important redundancy means that we should provide the information in more than one way because maybe some people find it convenient to use it in one way and some people maybe in the another way in information should be present in the different forms or the different mode for example we can provide the information in a graphical way uh, some people are not literate they can see the icons they will understand that what is the meaning of this icon or maybe in the verbal in the text or by the touch so different system can provide the information in a different way for the different people either the graphical or maybe by the sound or maybe by the text or when you are touching something in the system which allow the to choose the item using the touch touch screen system uh, we should uh, get the information and the system should respond the next principle for the universal design is the tolerance for the error minimizing the impact and damage caused by the mistakes because the human it's not possible or it is impossible that we assume that humans uh, will not do the mistake so no matter how good is the design but uh, there are some points there are some situation where the humans are going to do the mistakes so we should uh, design the system in such a way there should be a mechanism which allow the user to perform some kind of recovery or even if the recovery is not possible uh, the damage should be the minimum for example uh, if you delete a file by mistake so you have a chance that uh, you can recover the file not always but in many situation if you look the file in the recycle bin you may find the deleted file and even if it is being deleted in from the recycle bin there are some software which can uh, still find the file so there is a mechanism that you are going to recover from the mistake and similarly in the word processing system if you have delete some figure or table by mistake you can do the undo operation by pressing the control Z the next principle for the universal design is the low physical effort system should be designed to comfortable to use because we need we do not want that only the strong people can use the system so we should design in, in, in a way that it should be comfortable to use minimizing the figure, physical effort and the fatigue so it should not be the case that when the user are using the system after using a system for some time they are being tired they are getting fatigue so the physical effort should be the minimum the physical design of the system should allow the user to maintain a natural posture with the reasonable operating effort so in whatever situation you are using the system either you are standing or you are sitting so the posture should be in such a way that you are feeling comfortable for example if you are using the ATM machine the height of the ATM machine neither should be very high nor should be very low so that we can use it conveniently we should care full about all the people some people are tall some people are short so not much physical effort should be required to use the system uh, the next point in the low physical effort is that repetitive or sustained action should be avoided because usually it happens that if you are performing action again and again they may cause some physical problem maybe some strain or maybe some problems in the fingers or in the in the hand if we are using the keyboard or something again repeated repetitively so this should be avoided maybe some batch processing system or some script can be used which is performing the re repetitive task the next or the last principle for the universal design is that size and space for approach and use the placement of the system should be such that it can be reached and used by any user regardless of body size posture or the mobility as uh, previously I give you the example for example like an ATM machine some ATM machines are drive through so when the people are uh, driving the car they should able to uh, park or stop the car close to the ATM machine and just mm, uh, with the, when they are sitting inside the car they should be able to use the ATM machine the height should be adjusted in such a way and similarly for the other ATM machines it should not be very high it should not be very low because the people have the different height so they should be able to use so any kind of system we should careful about this thing that uh, different people have the different body sizes uh, so they should able to use the system in a in a convenient way 
so these are the seven universal uh, principle for the design so these principles should be keep in mind when we are designing a product now let's talk about the multi sensory system in which uh, more than sensory channel can be used more than one sensory channel in the interaction for example when we are interacting the system we can use sometime one or sometime more than one uh, channel for example sound sound is a channel text hypertext animation video gesture vision and they are being used in the range of the application particularly good for the user with the special need and the virtual reality uh, for example if some people have a uh, special need special need means that uh, they have some kind of disability or they require something special to use the system for example uh, some people uh, they they find it convenient that they get the feedback in terms of the sound so when they are pressing some icon or they are clicking some button they get the feedback in terms of the sound so they find it that they are going to do the less mistake and they are going to perform better and similarly uh, if we are designing a system for the children maybe the animation and the videos are much more helpful because if you are just giving the information using the text then the children will not be engaged so to keep them engaged uh, we are providing the animation because the animations and the videos are using the multiple senses of the human for example in the animation uh, we are looking at the pictures and the pictures are moving and they are performing some actions so we are using our visual sense we are using our hearing sense and uh, this is going to be more interesting so the, when we are presenting the information which is going to uh, utilize the multiple senses of the humans then uh, it is uh, going to be better one the usable senses the five senses humans have the five senses sight sound touch taste and the smell are used as used by us every day so we are using these senses in everyday life each is imported on its own so each of these senses is important together they provide a fuller interaction with the natural world so if we have all of these senses so we can enjoy the natural world but when we are designing the system especially the computer system or the software system can we use all of these senses what do you think that computer really offers such a rich interaction so can we use all the available senses mm, ideally in a perfect world yes but practically we are not using all of these senses uh, mostly in general we are using the sight means that we are looking at the interface we are looking at the screen we are using our eyes and we are using the hearing sense because we are listening the sound and we are using the touch sense because in many system we they are the touch based system we are selecting or we are uh, giving some command by pressing by touching on the screen but usually we are not using the taste and the smell sense in in the computer system usually so ideally we should use all but practically usually we are using the three senses so let's talk about these <coughs> in more detail speech human beings have a great and natural mastery of the speech uh, because uh, from the very early time maybe when the child is a baby is very small he he is trying to talk he is making some he is making some noises and later on he is learning from his parents from his siblings and then he or she is start to speech so this is the sense which is in which humans are good make it difficult to appreciate the complexities what it means it means that the speech is not simple they are not like a mathematics that you can always come with a formula that applying this thing and you are going to get the sentence sometimes some idioms are there sometimes some examples are there so and the gram grammar rules are always not the perfect sometimes we are using in a different way uh, for example for the first form of the word second third so they are not always using the same uh, mechanism or same rules uh, to make the forms of the word so this is not so much simple but it is an easy medium for the communication because we are learning from the very early age so we find it convenient to communicate our ideas 
uh, to communicate with some system using the speech so but the question is that are our systems are capable to uh, handle or interact with us using the speech maybe if I type the command by using the keyboard I am very precise but rather than typing I am giving I am speaking and I am giving the command uh, by my voice so will it always be the case that the system is going to understand my speech maybe in a perfect world it can but in the real it may not be so the humans feel comfortable but the question is that can the system understand the speech of the humans or not structure structure of the speech phonemes so now we are discussing little bit more detail about the speech phonemes a phoneme is a unit of sound that distinguishes one word from another in a particular language uh, these are the basic atomic units are there in the English they are around 40 phonemes are there so when we are producing a sound we are using these basic units sound slightly different depending on the context they are these larger units are let's see some chart in which we are trying to describe that what are the phonemes are there so here in this chart or in this table you will look that when we are when we are uh, using a word or when we are speaking a word sheep so how the word how the sound is coming which are being underlined these two e's are underlined so whatever sound we are producing this is being denoted by this phoneme which is something producing a sound like e when we say the word sheep inside this sheep there is a e so this e is being the uh, this is the phoneme which is being donated by this symbol similarly when we uh, say a word ship so you can see that in this ship the the letter i is underlined the meaning is that when we say the word when we speak the word ship so whatever sound is being produced there this is a phenom which is being represented by this letter or the symbol ship so if, if this is the sound is coming and when we are saying the word good so these two O are underlined so this is the sound which is the phoneme of this O wood so these are the uh, phonem phonematic chart is there in this these are the vowels are there and these are the consonants are there so of course we are not going to go into the much more detail about this thing but these are important if we want to design some uh, speech recognition system then the speech recognition system should be capable to understand the phonemes it should know that that what sound is being produced by the human and what letter is behind this sound so he can understand the word or he can understand the sentences so, so this is the idea behind discussing the phonematic chart let's discuss more about the speech procedure what is the procedure alternation in the tune and the quality even we are saying the same sentence but our tune is not always the same sometimes our tune is high and sometimes our tune is low and the quality can be the different sometimes uh, our quality of the sound is good and sometimes the quality of the sound is not good not good so even within the same sentence or within the same word procedure is the different or we can say procedure is the variation in the emphasis stress pauses and the pitch when we are speaking sometimes we make a emphasis which is giving us that this thing is more important which is giving us the idea that we want to say this thing is more important we are stressing something and sometimes we are making a little break between the words so these pauses are important to convey the message so that's why we say that speech is a complex thing human brain can understand human brain can process but for the machine it's not easy to understand if there is a variation in the emphasis the stress there are the pauses are there sound tune is there so how the machine is going to understand this thing impact more meaning to the sentence so all of these things are giving some meaning to the sentences so this is the one thing uh, about the sp the next thing is the syntax what is the syntax the structure of the sentence when we are using the sentence there are the verbs are there there are the subjects is there there is a object is there so how they are being in they are being related either the subject is coming first or the object is coming first so how they are being organized this is called the syntax of the sentence syntax a sentence so this is important 
from the syntax uh, we try to understand the meaning of this uh, we from the syntax we try to understand the part of this uh, sentence what part is the verb what part is the subject what part is the object the next is the semantic what is the semantic the meaning of the sent, uh, sentence so inside the uh, sentence there are the different parts are there verb subject object for example but from these part of the grammar there is some meaning is coming there so it is important that we understand the meaning but there are some more difficulties there because as I say that the sentences uh, can be said in a different way so their meaning can be slightly different for example it's just inserting the pause between the words can alter the meaning of the sentence even though the syntax remains the same we say a word maybe the subject then the object but because of the pause the meaning will be the different so not only the syntax is important but it is also important uh, uh, that we we get the meaning of the sentence uh, which is the semantics different people speak differently they have a different accent for example if we talk about the English accent of the British people can be different from the American people there can be the intonation the rise and the fall of the voice in the speaking as I say that sometimes the voice is rising sometimes the voice is falling stress idioms volume so all these are all these things are being affected affecting the meaning of the syntax meaning of the sentence the syntax of semantically similar sentences may vary so it may happen that we are saying a sentence sometime in the active voice and sometime in a passive voice so what will happen that syntax is going to be different but the meaning is going to be the remain the same because one is the one is the active voice one is the passive voice but they may have a same overall meaning is there but syntax is different and background noises can interfere if we are using some system which is based on the recognition of the speech if the background noises are coming they are going to uh, interrupt the system so they should be removed they should be filtered out and when they are people are talking they are using something which is not the words just they are the sound for example mm, rr, like this thing so they are not giving any meaning but they are a part of the speech or the part of the talking what's not enough semantic needed as well so we have to analyze the syntax we have to analyze the semantic uh, from the sentences so we talk about the speech recognition so in the speech recognition the meaning is that the humans are talking and the system has to understand the meaning of this speech now opposite way is the speech synthesis speech synthesis is the generation of the speech meaning is that now the system is talking maybe the computer system is talking so computer is generating the speech so this is called the speech synthesis this can be useful natural familiar way for receiving the information because I say that the humans are good in the communication using the language so maybe this can be convenient for many people that if they get the information from the system by the speech but there can be the problem similar to recognition prosody particularly is important because when the computer is talking when the system is talking how it is going to give the different prosody different tone where to pause where to give the emphasis where to stress the word and uh, how to talk active voice or the passive voice how the system is going to perform these things so it is looking like a natural thing so it's not easy this is intr intrusive needs the headphone or create uh, or creates the noise in the workplace so if we are receiving the information from the system by the speech synthesis maybe the other people can get disturbed maybe more than one people uh, are sitting close to each other uh, then if we if one person receiving the information from the system by the speed then the other person can get disturbed so maybe he or she has to use the headphones so speech synthesis is the useful yes it is the useful successful in certain constraint application when the user is particularly motivated to overcome the problem so there are some problems are there with the speech synthesis but if the user is willing and whatever the problems are there he is willing to overcome these problems then this is can be helpful and has the few alternatives and 
uh, not other options are not available there for example if you are driving a car then it's not a good idea that you look at the screen of the GPS again and again because this may cause the accident on the other way if the system is talking to you giving the instruction that uh, turn right turn left go straight so it is better that your intention is not going to be diverted so if the alternative other alternatives are not there then the speech synthesis when the system is giving you the instruction using the language is good good example screen readers are there read the textual display to the user uh, utilized by the visually impaired people if some people are blind people so uh, they cannot read the screen so if the screen readers are there which are doing the speech synthesis they are producing the sound they are reading the speech then this can be very helpful for the visually impaired people warning signal is spoken information sometime presented to pilot whose visual and haptic skills are already fully occupied for example when the pilots are flying the aeroplane so uh, their visual skills are uh, already occupied and their haptic haptic means that you are getting the feedback in terms of some vibration or other things uh, so they cannot have the idea they, they do not have the option that to use their visual and the haptic skill for some other information so maybe there are some warning signals are coming in terms of the sound so when they hear this sound they know that some sensor or something is giving us some information and we should look at this thing and also I give you the example for the uh, GPS that uh, when we are driving our hands are on the steering and our, our eyes are on the on the uh, uh, screen wind screen so uh, it's better that we are getting the instruction from the GPS by the uh, voice and now there are some non speech sounds are there they are called the Boeing, bang, squeeze, click, extra commonly used for the warning and the alarms so these are being used to give us some kind of warning and some kind of alarm they are not the actual word of some language evidence to show they are useful fewer typing mistake when the key clicks so some research has suggested that when these non speech sounds are there people are doing the less mistake for example when you are typing and after typing the each letter you hear a voice a small click then chances are that you will do the less mistake and video games are harder without the sound so in the video games it's uh, good uh, that we are getting the feedback uh, uh, for in terms of the sound which are of course not the language word maybe we are driving a car then we hear the some sound of the car which is on the road so then can it can be a good and a good uh, ex experience for the player for the gamer now let's talk about the auditory icons use the natural sound to represent different type of the object or the action so we know that there are the graphical icons are there there is some icon for the cut there is some icon for the paste now we are talking about the icons which are being represented by the sound so they are called the auditory icon so they can represent some object or they can represent some action let's see more detail about this thing natural sound have associated semantic which can be mapped onto the similar meaning in the interaction for example in the natural if we are throwing something away then it is producing the sound when it is crashing maybe on the ground or on the floor so if in some system we are throwing something and this has been represented by the sound of the smashing then the user have a feedback this is the auditory icon icons are there but the, there can be a problem that they is not equivalent for everything for example for some action there is not the equivalent sound is there and in the windows maybe you heard this sound when you are deleting a file behind this deleting there is some auditory icon is there which is giving the instruction that uh, you 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 delete something or you remove something similarly for the other things there are the sounds are there which are giving the clue that what action is being happened there for example there can be a sound for the when you start the window or when you shut down the window so just by hearing this sound you will have the idea that what action is going on now let's talk about the handwriting recognition uh, handwriting is another communication mechanism which we are which we are used to in the day to day life so we are writing we are writing the memos we are writing the letters so we are familiar with this mechanism 
so if we want to use this in our system maybe in a computer based system then we have to recognize the handwriting maybe we are giving the information to the system by writing something we can use some stylus or some kind of pen by using this pen we can write on the screen and the system should be capable to understand this writing handwriting consists of the comp complex strokes and the spaces because when we write a word we use the different letters and between the word we are giving the spaces and each word consists of the different stroke for example if I am writing the letter A or letter B so I am writing a stroke like this thing then my stroke is like this and then my stroke is like this thing so they are creating the different strokes are creating the letter B captured by the digitized tablet so either a tablet or some other devices are there which are capturing this uh, these uh, letters uh, which are being written by a stroke by the pen or the stylus a stroke transform to the sequence of the dots so when we are writing basically behind this stroke the tablet is digitizing this thing and there are some dots are there so system understand that you have given the information in terms of the strokes and which are being inf uh, which are being stored in the system as a dots but there can be the problem for the system for the which is which is uh, try to recognize the handwriting personal differences in the letter information if we are writing then a different people may have a different handwriting all the people are not writing in the same way for example one person is writing the a like this and the other person is writing very straight maybe this is more width is there so there is a difference in the letter formation then there are the breakthroughs are there is to not just the bitmap because when the people are typing they are when the people are writing basically they are doing the stroke they are not giving the information directly in terms of the exact dots or the bitmap and there can be some special alphabets there people are using some symbol or some notations uh, which are not easy for the system to understand so what is the current state what is the current situation they are usable hand handwritten writing recognition systems are available and they can work even without the training for the speech recognition system this is if we are going to give them the training they are going to perform better and over the time they are going to perform better but for the handwriting recognition system usually they can work without the training but many prefer the keyboard in general human prefer the keyboards uh, maybe they are much faster or maybe we are familiar with the keyboard rather than using the handwriting the next mechanism to giving the instruction to the system is the gesture what are the application gesture input for example put that here so there can be the gesture that which are giving some instruction to the system for example put that here system there is some gesture is behind this thing and the system will understand and do the action for example there can be some gesture that mm, turn off the switch or maybe start the application or maybe the bell is ringing we just want to uh, close the ringing of the bell so there can be the gesture for the different action and of course uh, there is a special sign language is there uh, which have a gesture for the different uh, words technology if we are using some kind of data gloves they may perform better rather than if we are just using our hands because in that case there is some camera is there which is trying to capture our gesture maybe it is missing something we are maybe doing the gesture very fast but if the sensors are being there in the gloves and we are wearing the gloves then the system may perform better and there are the position senses devices are there which are helping in the gestures benefits are there natural form of interaction for example pointing even when you are using the some pointing device in fact you are giving a kind of gesture to the system to this action now let's discuss about the user with the disability as we said initially that we are designing for the different kind of people with the different abilities so some people may have the special needs are there they are they have some disabilities so we have to see that what kind of systems are helpful for them for example if the people they have a visual impairment so the screen readers can be helpful for them because they cannot read from the screen so if the system is synthesizes the voice speech is being generated by the system system is reading the screen then it can be helpful for the visual impaired people uh, people with the hearing impairment so if they cannot hear uh, so information can be given to 
them by the system, by the text communication, by the gesture and by the caption. People with a physical impairment. Now the physical impairment can be of different levels. Some people even cannot move. Then maybe they can interact with the system using only the eye gaze. They cannot speak, even they cannot move. So just eye gaze, they can control the system. Or maybe they cannot move, but they can speak. So they can receive or they can give the information to the system by the speed. They can talk, but they cannot move. So this can be work as an input and the output. A speech impairment. Uh, so the people, uh, they have the speech impairment. So we can use the speech synthesis system. Uh, which is going to uh, generate the uh, speech uh, uh, by the system is going to generate the speech uh, for them so they can understand that what is the meaning of this thing and they can listen the system so this is these are some references and the disclaimer and the fair use statement is there so we have end the lecture thank you